There are just way too many cities that think they're the bridge city. So let's just settle this. It's the 10 bridgiest cities in North America. And yes, that is a word. And yes, it is coming up next. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. Viewer suggested topics do make me happy, but this is just one I wanted to do for reasons that I just don't expect anyone to understand. Because I feel like any city that's on a river and has a few bridges thinks it's a bridge city. It may be that my personal obsession with this question comes from having lived in Portland, Oregon for so long, where there's like hundreds of businesses that go by the moniker Bridge City. It always seemed kind of provincial to me. Like, isn't every city that's on a body of water, and most of them are, isn't each one a bridge city to some extent? But okay, quick tangent. The way cities differentiate themselves or brand themselves is really important. In terms of the people they attract, the industries they attract, the kind of culture they have, it's sort of a squishy thing that's hard to quantify, but I don't think that makes it any less important. As far as bridges themselves, well, they're important too. They're engineering marvels and they're expensive to construct, but worth it because they're hugely valuable to a city. I've talked about what makes them important in a couple other videos, so I won't belabor it here. So what I really wanted to get at with this list is which cities' identities are inextricably related to their bridges. So criteria, the sheer number of bridges is important, but I really wanted to see bridges that cross important navigable waterways. So like Denver has a ton of bridges, but the South Platte River and like Cherry Creek aren't important bodies of water. Just stating facts, I think. So Denver, you are not going to make this list. So just having a quantity of bridges isn't good enough. I wanna see bridges that are historic or iconic or multimodal in cool ways or have architectural merit or are just interesting in some other way. At the same time though, this isn't about cities that just have a couple of bridges, no matter how iconic. So I'm gonna start the controversy right now by telling you that the way I set up the criteria, San Francisco is only an honorable mention on this list. So yeah, this is probably gonna be one of my top 10 lists that starts arguments. Yeah, I'm an instigator this week. It's all about engagement anyway, so let's get into it. Number 10 is Seattle. Here's a question. What city has more water within a 10 mile radius of its downtown? San Francisco, maybe? You know, I have a whole theory that part of the reason coastal cities are so expensive is because, by definition, a coastal city is where a bunch of the land that would have been in good proximity to the center of the city is just underwater. So the supply of close-in land is just a lot lower than it would be in, say, Oklahoma City. So it's a lot more valuable. Bridges, there are a lot, and the floating bridges across Lake Washington are super interesting. And eventually Link is gonna run on the I-90 bridge, just not in 2023, apparently. The bridges that really tug at my heartstrings, though, are the old double bascule draw bridges on the Ship Canal. These all date from 1917 to 1924, and they all carried streetcars when they opened. Remnants of a lost world. Number nine is Louisville. I'm gonna be honest, most of the bridges here are trash car sewers. I mean, what do you expect when the downtown looks like this? But the bridges really do dominate the riverfront. I do love the Big Four Bridge, which really is one of the most impressive bike ped bridges in the US at least one of the longest. This is just about the widest point on the Ohio River, and spoiler alert, it's not the last time you're gonna see the Ohio River on this list, which I think says something about how important the Ohio was to city building and westward expansion in the nation's history. Number eight is Montreal. I do like a city that has a couple different rivers. The Prairies River on the north side has a lot going on, but I like the Pont Viau. Dedicated bus lanes are good. Most of the action is on the St. Lawrence though. 
The Champlain Bridge is a bit of a traffic sewer, but it does have dedicated bus lanes and you can see the Caton area is in place for the REM REM South Shore Line, which I believe is opening in 2023. The Jacques Cartier is notable too, carries pretty big bike and ped volumes. Number seven is Cincinnati, which has a few pretty notable bridges over the Ohio. One, we have to talk about the perpetually congested Brent Spence, which was in the news this month because there's apparently a crap ton of money for a replacement bridge in the infrastructure bill. I think the concept here is to solve traffic by adding more freeway lanes. It's really outside the box thinking. Cincinnati folks, let me know what the latest is. In better news, let's check in on the Purple People Bridge, which, like the Big Four in Louisville, is a railroad bridge that's been repurposed for bike ped use. And maybe pound for pound, the coolest bridge in the US, the Roebling, which dates from 1867, so quite a bit older than the same designer's Brooklyn Bridge. Number six is St. Louis. Look, I'm a sucker for historic bridges that stand the test of time. And I'm a sucker for bridges that carry modern transit. So the Eads Bridge checks a lot of boxes for me. Dates from 1874, has a lower deck that's rail only that got repurposed to carry Metrolink in 1993. I use the word iconic in this video probably too much, but the Eads is that. There's other cool stuff though. The McKinley Bridge, which originally carried an interurban line and now carries two lanes of traffic and a pretty solid bikeway. And the Chain of Rocks Bridge, which is now bike ped only, but believe it or not, actually carried traffic through this bizarre 22 degree bend at one point. I'm not even gonna try to explain the design, just Google it. Number five is Portland, Oregon. Yeah, it's a bridge city, I just don't think it's the bridge city. Across the Columbia, you've got car sewer bridges with zero dedicated transit right away, so yeah, that's gross. All the cool stuff is on the Willamette. You've got the Tillicum, which carries light rail, streetcar, buses, bikes, and pedestrians, just no cars. Lots of cool bridges as you head north, but you have to nerd out on the steel. The upper deck carries light rail on the inside lanes and general traffic on the outside lanes. And then on the lower deck, you've got freight trains and Amtrak and lots of bikes and pedestrians. Finally, if you get way up north on the river, you get the St. John's Bridge, which is, I don't know, is majestic too strong a word? Number four is Philadelphia. The most well-known stuff is on the Delaware and the Ben Franklin Bridge is definitely a standout but there's all kinds of cool stuff on the school kill too. The Market Street Bridge has super wide sidewalks, so it's very multimodal friendly and connects right to the 30th Street Station. And you get all kinds of fascinating stuff as you pass through Fairmount Park. The Falls Bridge and the Strawberry Mansion Bridge, which are great multimodal connections, but also it's really interesting and ornate. Okay, I've got the top three coming up, so given what I've shown you so far, see if you can guess what the top three are and what order they're in. I do have some honorable mentions that are probably going to help you narrow it down. But first, quick reminder to drop a like on the video and hit the subscribe slash bell, unless you're too cool for bridges. Links to social media are down in the description. Instagram is probably the best place to find me right now. Patreon link is down there as well, and I really do appreciate all of you who are supporting the channel directly. Honorable mentions, I talked about Denver earlier. Miami is kind of in the same boat, lots of bridges, but just not really that impressive. San Antonio, yeah, there's a river, sort of, and they've kind of built their brand around it, but you wouldn't call it a bridge city. Here were all my near misses. Minneapolis has some very cool bridges downtown, but probably most famous for exactly the wrong reasons. Cleveland recently named their baseball team after a bridge decoration. Still doesn't get them on the list. Vancouver, the Lions Gate is very cool, and the bridges on False Creek are good and getting better. Calgary, the Peace Bridge is extremely cool. Sacramento, I do love the Tower Bridge. 
Tampa, not pretty, but the Sunshine Skyway is impressive in its own way and deserves a mention. Boston, lots of cool bridges, but nothing really jumps out. And Milwaukee, which has a ton of interesting bridges over the Milwaukee River. Okay, let's mosey on down the Lake Michigan shore for our number three city, which is Chicago. Are bridges the first thing you think of when you think of Chicago? Probably not, but maybe they should be. The bridges here don't jump out at you with their scale, but more with number and variety and how unusual a lot of them are. I talked about the Outer Drive Bridge in my video on bike bridges. Some of the ones on the Chicago River are just works of art though. The DuSable Michigan Avenue Bridge is just a gem. And some of them are cool just because of how multimodal they are, like the Wells Street or the Lake Street, both of which have the L running on top of them. But it's not all about downtown. There are very interesting and very cool rail bridges on the Calumet on the south side of the city too. If you love old industrial design and stuff where the coolness kind of sneaks up on you, this might be your city. Or maybe you do want a city that jumps out at you with the sheer magnitude and majesty of its bridges. If so, I present number two, New York. I mean, only one of the five boroughs is on the US mainland. The other four are spread across three islands. So yeah, bridges and tunnels are gonna be a big deal. The East River alone is just masterpiece after masterpiece. But the George Washington across the Hudson is a showstopper in its own right, and the Verrazano Narrows is too, in its own way. The bridges that connect Queens to the Bronx are important too, and the Harlem River bridges are low-key kind of awesome. The High Bridge, originally a water conveyance for the Croton system, is really one of the cool ped bridges in the US. I have to say, my number one does not have bridges that are quite as iconic as the ones I just mentioned, but the city I put at the top does overwhelm you with the sheer number and variety relative to the size of the city and the unique geographic setting that puts the bridges front and center, and that's Pittsburgh, PA. Bonus points for thematic unity over the Allegheny, or they just got a bulk discount on yellow paint. Theme continues somewhat on the Monongahela, but you've also got cool stuff like the Hot Metal Bridge, which has a great name, of course, but also provides high quality multimodal access to fine dining establishments. So bonus points for that. And yeah, the Ohio River is here too, and they apparently did not run out of yellow paint. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you Pittsburgh, the bridgiest city in North America. Okay, this is another one that ended up being extremely difficult, so leave your complaints and your counterpoints down in the comments. Thanks for joining today, and thanks to the patrons for helping keep the channel chugging along. The direct support, as always, does mean a lot. Keep the great topic suggestions coming. I'll be back with a new installment next week, and I'll see you then.